Battlegrounds Gaming Engine, also known by its acronym BGE, is easy to use cross-platform virtual tabletop software for creating and playing digital game conversions of board games, war games, card games, and dice games. In this tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to use the software to create a digital game conversion from start to finish, pretty much in real time. I won't be rushing through the process since I'll be explaining things along the way. That should give you an idea of how fast and easy it can be to create a game conversion in BGE. The game we're going to be using for this tutorial is called Aliens This Time It's War. It's a fan-made print-and-play card game by Mark Chaplin in which two players, one playing the alien and the other the colonial marines, battle it out using asymmetrical yet balanced card decks. In addition to cards, the game uses four types of tokens that will be placed on various cards during play to mark certain game effects. Most of the artwork used in this digital conversion was downloaded from BoardGameGeek.com. By viewing this tutorial, you should get a good idea of the software's usability, but by all means you will not be seeing anywhere near the software's full capabilities and features. Aliens is a fairly basic game, just cards and some tokens on a tabletop. Just be aware that BGE can handle many other things not shown here, such as boards made out of tiles, complex sequencing mechanics, dice macros, and much, much more. Okay, let's get started. So here I've got my installation of Battlegrounds Gaming Engine. In the game boards folder, I put a graphic of a wooden tabletop. That'll be our playing surface. And in the components folder, I placed everything else. The alien card deck, the battlefield cards, the marine character cards, the marine playing deck, uh, the rules, and then four different tokens that the game uses. Okay, so let's go and launch Battlegrounds and get started putting this game together. Now before we get started, let's first set some preferences. We're going to turn off the movement guide, which can be distracting when you're putting a game together. Disable learning mode to expose all the advanced commands. And nothing in the second preferences screen. We'll go into the third screen and I like to uh, disable the commands panel to, to keep clutter off the screen and auto hide the battlegrounds button. So now that button only appears when you move the cursor to the top left. And finally we're going to disable the the roll dice macro button because this game does not use dice. We'll zoom out a bit. That's our playing area. It's a 40 by 40 grid by default. We're going to customize that. We're going to make this a bit smaller for our purposes. 34 by 31 grid cells. And we're not going to actually use a grid in this game, so we'll disable that. And I'm going to set a zoom level so that we can see the entire playing area at once. Then we're going to load the game board, which as I said is just the wooden table graphic. And there it is, set to the size that we specified. Now it's time to start placing game components on our table. We'll start with the battlefield cards. This game uses five battlefields with one card representing each battlefield. This is the reactor chamber. We'll go with the default scale adjustment of 50%. That's fine for our purposes. And we're going to turn on anti-alias so that it looks better when zoomed out. And we'll enable the for portrait use current token. And what that does is when you roll over the card, it shows you a magnified view, a 100% view in the upper right corner. We'll place the next battlefield. 
operation center. And again, turning on anti-aliasing and the uh, magnified portrait. Third battlefield is dropship evac. Fourth one, actually these aren't in order. The Sulaco loading bay. Oops, I put it on top of the other. And the final battlefield, APC withdrawal. So there we have our five battlefield cards. Now these actually need to go in a certain order. The reactor chambers first, then the... Oh uh, wait, I, turned, I forgot to enable the portrait on some of these cards. So let me do that real quick. That one's already set. So, let's put them in order. Um, operations Center, APC Withdrawal is second. Then Operations Center is third. Fourth one is Dropship Evac. And finally, the Sulaco Loading Bay. Okay, so we've got our five battlefield cards in order. And we can just mouse over them to see them magnified if we want. Now this game requires you to spend a certain number of turns on each of the battlefield cards. So we're going to put in a, a token here. It's a red glass bead. It's a, a see-through uh, semi-transparent PNG graphic. And that's going to be used to mark the exact turn on each battlefield card. Now notice that it's, it's snapping to an invisible grid. So I'm going to disable Snap to Grid with the X hotkey. So we can drag it freeform and place it on turn zero. And let's go ahead and save what we've done so far. I'll call this Aliens TTIW for this time it's war. And saved. Next to the battlefield cards, there's a couple other cards I need to place. Uh, for convenience, I put them in the same folder as the battlefield cards. First one is the airlock card. This card can be used on the final battlefield as a last ditch defense by the marine player to uh, flush all the aliens and possibly some marines out of the airlock. Let's re-enable snap to grid here. And what I'm going to do, this is a double-sided card, unlike the others, so I'm going to add another token to it, so it has two sides. Select the Airlock Open card, and OK. And now this is a double-sided card token. With hotkeys, you can flip it back and forth, the open and close side. And lastly, we're going to put the Nuke the Site from Orbit card. This is a card that you have to basically remove 12 tokens from as the Marine player. Uh, and once you've got the, the 12th token off, you win the game. It's one way to win the game. All right, now comes the fun part. Um, so far we've been adding single-sided cards individually, and then we added a double-sided card. This time we're going to create a whole card deck at once. And this is the Aliens deck. And I'm going to page through uh, some of the cards so you can see that they're all in here. And what we want to do is select the card that's going to be the back side of the card. Click on Choose, and it imports all the media and creates the card deck and even shuffles it for you. Now, I'd like to take a look at how the cards came out in this deck. So, first off, I'm going to set my stagger distance, the horizontal stagger, to 122 pixels. 
that'll space these cards out nicely. And then I'm going to drag the deck over here since it's going to stagger them to the right. And with the return key, they fan out, and then I can flip them over, and they look pretty good. This extends far off right off to the right of the screen. I don't need to see them all right now though, so I'll just stack them back up and put the deck here for now. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other card deck, the one that the marine player is going to use. So we'll select the marine deck and I can just page through a few of the cards so you can see them. We want, again, we want to select the one that represents the back of the card. Click on choose and it imports all the media. Shuffles the deck. And there it is. Let's fan it out. Flip it over. And we can leave that right here for now. Okay, now we've zoomed out. So far we've looked at placing cards one at a time and making an entire deck at once. This time let's create a multi-token component. What that's going to do is it's going to put every single token in this folder, the marine characters folder, into a single component. And I'll explain why in a minute. That also automatically imports all the necessary media. And you can see it's got all those tokens on that unit. Okay, now we're going to set some properties for this. Activate the portrait and anti-aliasing. The reason being that we're now going to break this down into separate components split into multiple units and it inherits the properties of the multi-token unit. You can see them all here. Let's just drag a few of these over for convenience so we can see them on the table at once. So these are 32 cards for 16 characters. Each character is going to be one double-sided card. But I did it this way as a batch because it's, it's just quicker and easier. So now all I need to do is pick out the two, let's say for Pharaoh, two cards that belong to the same Marine. I'm going to select the first one, select the dead state, and then I'm going to merge them into a multi-token component, which is basically a card because it's got two sides. And you can see the living and dead state. And I can flip it over back and forth with the hotkeys. And we're going to do the same for all of the remaining 15 characters. We'll pick the live state, we'll pick the dead state, we'll select them both, merge them into a multi-token component and so on and so forth until all of these characters are done. It's still a lot quicker than than doing it one at a time. Alright, fast forward a bit. We've just finished merging the last character. All the character cards are done and I've now arranged the characters in their proper order. I'm going to take this moment to rearrange some of the game components to more finalized positions on the game table. There we go. And now we're going to place our first token. Uh, place a component. Select our token, which is in the unfiled folder. We want this nuclear warhead token. Click on OK. And now I want to anti-alias it. And I'm going to duplicate it with a hotkey. So we now have two. See? And I'm going to select them both and duplicate again. 
and again. Just keep duplicating until I have 12. I'm going to fan them out so I can count them, and make sure there's 12. And with the caps lock key, I can change the uh, the stack offsets so we can arrange the stack however we want, however close together or spaced apart. I'm not happy with that angle. Let me shift it to that perspective. That looks about right. And I'll just put these over here for now. Now we're going to place another component, a plus one power token. We're going to need six of these. So first I'll set the properties on the original so that when I duplicate it, it will inherit those properties. And hotkey to duplicate. And again, then select the three and duplicate them so that we have six. Might as well count them. Here's another way. Just drag two, three, four, five, six. Good. Put these here. And our final token for this game is the toughness token, which some aliens get. I think the next release of BGE, I'm going to set the portrait and anti-aliasing on by default for components, because it seems that more often than not, you need to enable that. And we need three of these toughness tokens, so I've duplicated it twice. And now let's rearrange these things. Turn off snap to grid. Turn it back on. And these cards should be a bit lower. Drag them down so that the, the bottoms align perfectly like so. Now up here in the, the top edge of the table is where the alien player will be keeping his cards, uh, the cards that are in, their, in his hand. Uh, so let's identify that to make it easier for everyone. We're going to use the draw tools to create a text label. And we'll type aliens. We'll set a nice large font and something more appropriate to the science fiction genre. This is an all caps font. You can set a nice thick border width with a black in this case to make it stand out from the table and the character spacing and alignment, we'll leave that as is. So we drag our text label to the top edge of the table to identify it as the alien side, and we're going to lock it down so it doesn't get accidentally moved during play. And now we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the table, uh, create a text label, and this one will be for the Marines, and BGE remembers the last settings used uh, the parameters for the text so you don't have to select them all over again. It makes it easy to create a lot of text labels in the same style. And we'll lock this down as well. We're done with the draw tool so we close that out. And this is a good time to save our progress. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll watch part two of this tutorial when it's available.